just, yep, nine. And then what's the last one down there at the bottom? I think it says phase shift. Let's go with direction first. Which way did it go? Which way? Right. Inside, remember the, uh, the horizontal, the inside was the opposite of what you think, so it's negative, that means it's going right. And how far? How far did it go? Is it really pi over five? Pi over five over four. The absolute value of pi over five, if you're going to keep the negative with it, over four, which would be pi over <coughs> 20. So the phase shift is, a, well, pi over 20 is not very big, just slightly to the right. Now, this part's the easy part. Nobody has, okay, I shouldn't say nobody, but very few people have trouble with this one. Can you guys see this graph okay? Because it's, yeah, that thing seems to be lower than it was before. It used to shine up. You can't, it can be adjusted, but I'm not going to make you climb up on a chair and do it. I don't think I'm going to do it now either. This graph goes through a point at um, 0, negative 2. It goes through a point at 5, 2. And it looks like it goes through a point at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, negative 2. My job is to decide whether I want to write the equation for this graph as a sine function or a cosine function, and then go through and figure out what the amplitude is, what the period is, what the midline is, and so on and so forth, and if it's phase shifted. So we're going to leave this stuff up here. and start with the period. From looking at this graph, how long does it take to go through everything once and start over? Fifteen? Uh, no, because at fifteen it's gone back up instead of, if we go from here to here, it's gone through everything and gone back up. So, ten is the one I'm going through. How do you find that? Well. Pick any two spots that you can clearly distinguish and count how many lines there are between them. So in this case, for instance, up here, here's a high point and it's back up to a high point. So I can count, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the period is 10. What's the midline for the graph? Why do you think it's y equals 0? Right, its highest point is at 2, its lowest point is at negative 2, halfway between the two is still y equals 0. What's the amplitude? Are you sure it's 5 or is it the 2? So I gotta vote for 5 and I gotta vote for 2. Which one is it? 2. It's going for the 2 because it's how far it is from the midline, which we just determined was y equals 0, to the highest point, and the highest point then is 2. So the amplitude is 2. Phase shift. Well, before I ask you, is there a phase shift, do you want to do a sine or a cosine function? All of this period, midline, amplitude has no relevance as to whether I pick a sine or a cosine function. They'll come out to be the same for either one. The phase shift, though, will be determined by whether or not I'm going to use a sine or a cosine function to, the to draw the equation for this graph. Why do you want a cosine? There we go. It doesn't go through zero, zero. Now, just a little modification of the zero, zero part. If the midline was not y equals zero, and it was moved up, then your graph would also not go through zero, zero, but if it went through the midline at the y-axis, then the sine graph is still the better one. It's the easier one. I shouldn't say better. Some people like sine graphs, but cosine graphs. But it's the easier one. So since this one does not go through 0, 0, so it doesn't go through the midline and the y-axis, 
cosine looks like the easier one to use. Is there a phase shift if this is a cosine graph? We can do it without a phase shift. How do I deal with the fact that it's at the bottom instead of at the top? Because my original graph, the one that's over there, it's up here at y equals zero. So, yeah, amplitude can't be negative. So what happened to this graph to get it to be down there? No, it doesn't have an E. You have the A is negative. A is negative. The amplitude itself is positive, too. But the A, in order to get this graph reflected over the x-axis, is going to have to be negative. So this is none. So there's no phase shift. But it is reflected over the x-axis. So this means negative for A. All right, now let's draw the equation. Let's write the formula for this. So A is going to need to be negative 2, because 2 is my amplitude. You told me I want to use cosine. What's B? Am I ready to figure? Do I have B? Do I just plug 10 in there? No. What do I do? I'm going to have to do a calculation, right? Because I know that the period is 2 pi over B, so what I'm going to do here is to figure out B, I'm going to do the following. 10 is equal to 2 pi divided by B. So 10B is equal to 2 pi. That means B is going to be 2 pi over 10, which you can simplify if you want into pi over 5. So now we know that B is pi over 5. And then I have my X. What about C? What was C related to? The phase shift, was there one? Nope, that means I don't need to add anything on there. And what about D? D was related to the midline, which I know is y equals 0, so it would be just plus 0. Now, here's the part I personally like about doing these problems. If you pull out your calculator and you put this in to your y1, and then set your window to go from negative 15 to 15, and from negative 3 to 3. Make sure you're in radians because the problem's in radians. You will get a graph that looks just like this if you have done this correctly. So you can always check. It should always match up. I like people are sitting there playing. Did it work? Did it work? <laughs> 